This is my Unreal prototype, and this is Gato 4. And I'm mixing the two together. And I have no idea what I'm doing. And just for fun, I'm gonna give myself one day to do it. So I might have a little bit of an idea of what I'm doing. I've already built this system and we're just gonna be moving it into a new engine. I have briefly looked at the 2D engine in Gato, but the 3D engine, that's new to me. And I'm guessing it might be new to some of you too. My main issue is gonna be rethinking from Blueprint to GD script. So I've got my search bar ready. My coders know what I'm talking about. First step is gonna to be to build the grid and that means instances. You may remember how instanced meshes work from one of my hex grid videos. It's the same concept within Gato 4, only I'll be working within what's called a multi-mesh. I can set the mesh within the multi-mesh node using the hex tile mesh, then use this code here to loop through a set number of instances and place them into a grid. However, I've run into an issue with my hexagonal placement code from Unreal. So I've got everything showing up, but it's just not lining up correctly. After parsing through the code, I think I found my issue. So in Unreal, the Z-axis is the up and down. Gato, the Y-axis is the up and down. So I finally got the grid rebuilt in Gato, and now we can move on to the color randomization. Like in my Unreal prototype, I'll be using instance custom data to hold information regarding the tile height that I will then pass along to a shader. So I know that the custom data gets put into the vertex shader, and we need to get that into the pixel shader. By setting the Y position value of each tile to a random float, passing that into the R value of the custom data and calling it within the shader, I should be able to distinguish between water and land tiles. With my random color height code working, I can add a variable to control the strength of the height change for the tiles. Although it seems like my old value from the Unreal project reads a little differently than in Gato. So I'll need to find a better value. That's a little better. And with some color adjustments, I have my water and land tiles randomly generating. Okay, I'm, I'm tired of looking at the, the dark and void of nothingness. Are, are you tired of looking at the nothingness? So let's add, let's add a sky. Let's get a sky in there. I initially took a look at the built-in Gato Sky Environment system. And while it works okay, it didn't match up to the volumetric clouds from my Unreal project. After some quick searching, I managed to find a wonderful volumetric cloud shader that I could simply plug into the project. Just a matter of loading it up and setting the shader and no more black void. With the tiles and sky in place, it was time to look at the water. In Unreal, I used the basic plain mesh and single layer water material to achieve the ocean-like effect. And I'll take the same approach here in Gato. I took the bounding box size of the grid to resize the water plane depending on the size of the grid and in doing so, learned how to reference other nodes in Gato. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at all this material information on the right side and I'm not seeing a way that I can animate it. So I think we're gonna have to dive into some shaders. Writing within the shader is a bit newer for me, but the process actually proved pretty simple with the same concept of using time to shift the UV of the normal maps. In fact, I better check my own time. So we're doing so well on our time frame that I think we're going to add something that I didn't get to add in the Unreal prototype, a UI system to control everything in real time. UI elements work very similarly to 3D and 2D elements and have their own node category control. I found them actually very easy to manipulate and organize how I liked. So I'm not exactly sure what I want. I don't know if I want to update it on the button being pressed or if I want to update it while everything is changed within a field or one of the sliders. Uh, there's, you know, pros and cons, pros and cons. I soon discovered the answer lied in signals. Signals allow you to communicate with other nodes within your scene tree. With a signal, I can run a function within my grid script from the UI script whenever a button is pressed or a value is changed. To start, I'll adjust the grid size and the height strength from our UI menu before moving on to the other options. I literally cannot get this box to give me an energy. After switching from the text box field, the code worked without any issue. I know there's a way to use the text box, but I don't have the time to figure it out. With the new field, the strength adjustment works as well, but with a weird visual bug. Eventually, I figured that I needed to reset the instance count whenever updating the grid. And that seems to have killed the bug for now. This is going so well. I'm gonna add something that I didn't even plan on adding. noise. 
Now my Unreal prototype required a third party plugin to generate noise within blueprints. My worry is that Gato will need the same integration. It turns out that Gato has the fast noise light library already integrated into the engine, meaning I can generate and reference a huge amount of noise options already. With some new variables and noise, I managed to replace my random height code with a noise generated code resulting in this. My prototype port is almost complete, but I'm a little curious about performance. How far can I push the engine with my code? So I performed a little stress test and up to the number of tiles from 2,500 to 40,000. There were some slight frame drops when adjusting with the UI, but it finally gave out around 200,000 tiles. So I'm running out of time, but there's really one more piece that I have to add in order to make this look as close as possible to the Unreal prototype, and that is terrain color. Tiles underwater should be brown, tiles near water should be sandy, and tiles above water should be grass or snow depending on height. And I can do this pretty easily within a shader code until I ran into a slight problem. I, I literally cannot get these color variables to go through. I know what needs to happen, I know how to do it, it just won't do it. And after some choice words, I realized my mistake. The custom data was not being passed as XYZ, but as RGB, meaning I needed to reference the G of my variable and not the Y. Pretty clear that you can come up with some really cool stuff in Gato 4. If you'd like to see some of that cool stuff, check out this video where I count down some really cool Gato projects from the past week.